Hello, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy today's video. I'm painting lilacs by special request and that's lovely. I hope more of you um, request something for me to attempt. I like a challenge. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos and thank you very much for watching. There are many different varieties. I decided to paint mine a pale lilac colour which wasn't entirely successful but I'll show you what I did to adjust things. I'm using acrylic paint, titanium white, primary yellow, raw sienna, raw amber, French ultramarine blue, sap green and alizarin crimson. I've painted my 9x12 canvas panel with a mix of French ultramarine blue and titanium white and I'm using a rigger brush and I'm just going to sketch in some stems. I'm assuming these lilac branches are on a shrub looking up to the sky. I've dipped my brush in water and I'm using straight raw sienna to do this. For my mid-tone on my lilacs I'm using French ultramarine blue, some alizarin crimson and I'm going to mix some titanium white into that to give me a pale lilac colour. It'll be a little on the blue side. I think of lilacs as cone shaped and it's a good basic shape to put on. I'm not putting any petal shapes in at all. I'm just putting straight colour. My mid-tone I will be putting highlights and shadow on this in uh, using petal shapes. I know this looks a bit basic and nothing like lilacs. It hasn't got that soft fluffiness we need. I'm using a half inch flat and I'm going to mix primary yellow, sap green and uh, some titanium white to give me a good mid-tone green. And I'm drawing the um, leaf in from the outer edge in toward the centre vein. If I remember correctly, lilac leaves are almost heart shaped. I'm just cutting the basic mid-tone down and then I will add highlights and shadow and that will make the painting more lively, more realistic, although I don't go for ultra realistic. I think of myself as um, an expressionist really. I'm using a Q-tip to put in the little unopened buds that you see at the um, ends of the lilac blossom. I'll probably go over these several times throughout the painting. I'm going to use this filbert brush which has a rounded top to put in my first layer of petals. I'm not doing floret shapes, I'm just putting in straight petal shapes. At this point I'm still not worried about light and shadow. Um, that will happen as I go further along. Right now I'm just putting in these um, a sort of undercoat of petals. I do this same thing when I'm painting hydrangeas.
Now they're getting that nice, soft, fluffy look. I'm using a smaller filbert brush just to dot in a few tinier petals. I feel I have to paint uh, both lilacs and hydrangeas in layers, putting on that first mid-tone and then putting on the petal shapes and then putting on the little florets over the top of that. It's what gives it that soft, fluffy blossom. It's all the different shades peeking through. I'm mixing alizarin in to give a darker shadow. I'm um, saying that the light is coming from the right hand side. So everything on the left will be a little bit in shadow. I'm putting in this shadow because I lost it when I put the petals in. You can see as soon as you add in that shadow, the blossom begins to take form. It gets a rounded quality. I'm going to deepen the shadow a little bit with some blue. I feel I need to reinforce my highlights. I'm using the same small um, filbert brush. I don't always paint all four petals of a floret. I sometimes paint two or three with a sideways swipe to indicate the um, other petals because they won't all face straight on and it would look odd if you did it that way. It's all right to overlap petals and leaves in the painting. It makes things look more natural. I'm going over my buds again. I'm not totally happy with them. I might end up using a paint pen on these.
The unopened buds are usually the same color as the blossom, but um, it doesn't show up very well. So I'm trying a little green. I'm not. I'm still not sure about it. I'm trying a little pink on my blossom. I'm not sure whether uh, I'll stay with that. We'll have to see. Using French Ultramarine Blue and Sap Green, I'm going to put some shadow on my leaves. I've just darkened the shady side of each leaf. Now this mix has some yellow and some white in it with the sap green and that's going to be my highlight on the leaf on the sunny side. Well, I decided to use titanium white on these little buds. I'm just not happy with the way they're going. I almost certainly will end up using a paint pen to fix them. As the paint has dried, it has dulled down a little bit, so I'm reinforcing my highlights at the same time. I have the door standing open so you can hear the Canada geese. It takes a little while to paint all these little florets, but it's worth the effort. I'm dotting in the centers of the flower using um, a little yellow and sort of a light yellowish green color. I sometimes use a Q-tip for this, but I think in this case it would be too large and the end of the liner brush is probably better.
I like to use alizarin crimson to shadow my stems. It adds a liveliness. I sometimes use French ultramarine blue or raw amber for that too. Mixing the yellow and alizarin crimson, that's primary yellow, I've made an orange which I'm going to use as the veins of the um, leaves. They are usually a pale green, I suppose, but um, I like colours that add a little zing to the painting. I found one of my 50 cent paints from Walmart. It's actually called Lilac and I'm going to dab some of that on. It's very transparent so um, you won't see a strong amount of the colour but really I've ended up with white lilacs here and um, I'm just dabbing this lilac paint on in the shadow areas. Chrissy, my art cat, has come to say hello. As you can see, the lilac made only a very subtle difference. I did use a paint pen to define the buds. I think they look a little bit better. I'm happy with these lilacs. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button to see more of my videos and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.